flesh-eating horses, child-devouring witches, and of course many-headed devil dogs. Get your sword and shield ready, and I hope Athena and Fortune are on your side today because we're coming face to face with some of the most terrifying monsters in all of Greek mythology. And we can guarantee that number one won't be what you expect. Number 20. Argus Argus, a servant of Hera, was a giant whose body was covered in 100 eyes. He made for a heck of a watchman for Hera, tasked with watching over a cow that her priestess Io had been transformed into. In case you're wondering, yes, the priestess turning into a cow had something to do with Zeus and his extramarital shenanigans. The less said about that, the better. In addition to his numerous eyes, Argus was imbued with constant strength and wakefulness, able to keep his watch forever without stopping to sleep or rest. His duty was cut short when he was slain by Hermes, who disguised himself as a shepherd and shut Argus's eyes permanently. According to some versions of the story, all it took to slay Argus was a simple thrown stone, earning him his spot toward the bottom of this ranking. Still, he has an impressive legacy. Hera took Argus's eyes and transferred all of them to the tail of her favorite bird, the peacock. There, his all-seeing eyes live on. But what Argus lacked in power, our next contestant made up for in horsepower. Number 19. Mares of Diomedes The giant Diomedes, king of Thrace, was in possession of four terrifying man-eating horses, known as the Mares of Diomedes. The demigod hero Heracles was tasked with stealing these mares by King Eurystheus, but he didn't know that these were no ordinary horses. Their diet of human flesh had driven them mad, and in some versions of the story they could also breathe fire. Heracles managed to complete his task by killing Diomedes and feeding him to his bloodthirsty horses. Yikes! By the way, Heracles is also conflated with a different hero, one whose name you might recognize. But to understand that, first you need to know about a really frightening kitty. Number 18. Nemean Lion Most of the iconic monsters in Greek mythology wound up facing off against one of the most iconic heroes, Hercules, also known as Heracles in the original Greek, but we'll stick to the more recognizable name from here on out. Hercules wasn't necessarily the greatest guy. There was that whole thing where he killed his wife and all their children, for example. Disney didn't include that part in the cartoon, but he was top-notch at monster fighting. When King Eurystheus presented Hercules with 12 labors to complete, his first assignment was to slay the Nemean lion. Now this was no ordinary lion. The beast, which was terrorizing people all around Nemea, was a vicious fighter whose skin was impervious to all weapons. But where spears and swords had failed, Hercules was able to kill the lion with his guns, by which we mean his big strong arms. He grabbed hold of the lion and squeezed it until he choked it to death. Then he wore its skin as a trophy. But unlike our next contestant, lions can't attack from above. Number 17. Stymphalian Birds For his sixth labor, Hercules was tasked with taking out the vicious Stymphalian birds who had migrated to the marsh in Arcadia and decimated the crops, trees, and people there. Pausanias described the deadly birds. These fly against those who come to hunt them, wounding and killing them with their beaks. All armor of bronze or iron that men wear is pierced by the birds. But if they weave a garment of thick cork, the beaks of the Symphalian birds are caught in the cork garment. These birds are the size of a crane and are like the ibis, but their beaks are more powerful and not crooked like that of the ibis. In addition to their extremely sharp beaks, the birds were equipped with metallic feathers they could use like weapons, and also poison dung. Gross. There's a legend that if a bird poops on you, it's good luck, but that definitely doesn't apply to these birds. If you crossed the path of the Stymphalian birds, you were pretty much flocked. Hercules was unable to enter the bird's territory directly, as the ground in the marsh where they dwelled wouldn't support his weight. Instead, Athena gifted the hero with a crotala a bronze rattle that he shook, frightening the birds into the air. Then he was able to shoot them one by one with arrows dipped in the poisonous blood of another monster on this list. No spoilers. The birds that survived flew away and would never trouble the people of Arcadia again, unlike our next horrifying reptilian beast. Number 16. Hydra This next monster has a good head on its shoulders. In fact, it has several. And if it ever happens to lose its head, two more grow out of the open wound in its place. That's right, we're talking about the Hydra. The Hydra was an enormous monster resembling a water snake with many heads. The exact number depends on the source, one of which could not be killed. The serpent's blood and its breath were both poisonous, and even breathing in the smell of it could potentially be deadly. For one of his labors, Hercules was tasked with slaying the Hydra, but he couldn't do it alone. 
he needed the help of his nephew, Iolaus. As Hercules cut off each head, Iolaus followed behind, using fire and a sword to cauterize each wound and prevent new heads from growing there. They continued this process until the only head left was the immortal one, which Hercules severed from its neck and buried beneath a heavy rock where it could do no more damage. For a little bit of extra firepower he could use during his future tasks, he dipped the tips of his arrows into the Hydra's poisoned blood. That's right, he took down the Stymphalian birds using the blood of the Hydra. That's working smarter, not harder. But there is more than one way to be a mythological horror with multiple heads. Number 15. Chimera Up next we have the Chimera, a hybrid monster made up of the parts of a lion, a goat, and a snake. Oh, and it can also breathe fire, in case it wasn't terrifying enough already. The Chimera was referred to in the Iliad as a bane to many men. It was known for terrorizing the residents of its homeland in Lycia. It spent its time there devouring people and presumably blasting them with its fire first to get them nice and crispy before it was slain by the hero Bellerophon, who attacked it while riding on the back of the winged horse Pegasus. But at least you need to be close to the Chimera for it to hurt you. For some creatures, it's enough just to hear them. Number 14. Sirens Hey, what's that sound? It sounds like beautiful music. Maybe we should get closer and see for ourselves. Wait! No! No, stop! Don't go any further! That's the enchanting voice of our next monster, the Sirens. Let's get one thing out of the way. You might have been picturing the Sirens wrong your entire life. These seductive creatures whose song lures sailors to crash their ships on treacherous rocks may live near the sea, but if you're picturing them as mermaids, you got it all wrong. They were actually bird women, with the lower bodies of birds and the heads or upper bodies of women. It makes sense when you think about it, fish aren't exactly famous for their singing skills. The exact ratio of bird to woman varies depending on the depiction, but one aspect of the sirens is always the same. They perched on the rocks and sang, tricking sailors into crashing their ships, ensuring that they would drown and never again reach home. Most famously, the sirens were encountered by Odysseus on his long journey, where he managed to avoid succumbing to their song by having his men stuff their ears with wax and then tie him to the mast of the ship so he might hear their song and live. In some retellings of that story, the sirens were so furious that a mortal man was able to hear their song and survive that they threw themselves into the sea and drowned. Now, speaking of bird women, the sirens weren't the only part bird, part woman monsters in Greek myth. Number 13. Harpies The harpies, the personifications of dangerous storm winds and the servants of Zeus, would swoop down from the sky to punish anyone who had angered the gods, most often Zeus, Hera, or Athena. When someone disappeared suddenly without explanation in ancient Greece, their disappearance might have been attributed to harpies snatching them up and carrying them away to their doom. But you'd rather be carried away than eaten, right? Number 12. Polyphemus The Cyclops or one-eyed giants are famous throughout Greek mythology, but one of them is more famous than any of the others, Polyphemus. Polyphemus is another one of the monsters encountered by Odysseus in his epic journey. The Cyclops trapped Odysseus and his twelve men in a cave where he blocked the entrance with a giant rock. He devoured six of the men, eating them alive. But what Polyphemus had in brute strength he lacked in critical thinking skills. Odysseus was able to trick the Cyclops by getting him drunk on wine, and when he had fallen asleep the hero stabbed him in the eye with a burning stake blinding him. Then Odysseus and his surviving men escaped by hiding beneath Polyphemus' sheep as they went out to pasture. Though blinded, the Cyclops survived the encounter with Odysseus and attempted to sink the hero's ship by hurling giant boulders at it as he and his men sailed away. But a stupid man-eater is one thing, a smarter one is far scarier. Number 11. Sphinx The Sphinx was a female monster with a lion's body, the head and chest of a woman, the wings of an eagle, and the tail of a snake. She was known for her appetite for human flesh and an affinity for riddles. According to myth, the gods sent her to Thebes to punish the people there for something, whatever they were mad about that day probably where she would eat anyone who failed to solve her riddle, which was taught to her by the Muses. The king of Thebes offered his throne to anyone who could defeat her, and Oedipus decided to accept the challenge. When he successfully answered her riddle, she responded reasonably by throwing herself off a mountain. By the way, in case you ever encounter a sphinx, here's the answer to her most famous riddle. What goes on four legs in the morning, two in the afternoon, and three in the evening? Why, it's man, who begins life crawling on all fours, walks on two legs in adulthood, and uses a walking stick in old age. There, now you can be just like Oedipus, but only in that one aspect, we hope. Speaking of messed up parent-child relationships, 
Number 10. Lamia Lamia might be the closest thing that Greek mythology has to the Boogeyman, a terrible monster used to frighten children into good behavior. She began as a beautiful daughter of King Belus of Libya, but after she caught the eye of Zeus and bore several of his children, Hera caught wind of the whole affair and was less than pleased. She killed all of Lamia's children except for one, who is featured later on this very list. At least that's one version of the story. In another, even more upsetting version, Hera forced Lamia to kill her own children. The grief and rage caused by this act transformed Lamia into a half-snake, half-woman monster who dwelled in a cave and emerged to steal babies and children from all the homes, devouring them. Better be good, kids, or Lamia will slither into your room and eat you alive! But hey, at least you're not being eaten alive in a dark, scary maze. Number 9. Minotaur Animal-human hybrids are pretty common throughout Greek mythology, and one of the most famous of all time is the part bull, part man Minotaur. Born of the unholy union between Queen Pasiphae and a white bull, the Minotaur was kept in a labyrinth where King Minos would send seven Athenian men and seven Athenian women to be sacrificed to the beast on a regular basis. Some versions say once a year, others say every nine years. The Minotaur's reign of terror continued until Theseus defeated it with help from Princess Ariadne. The Minotaur is now dead. Phew, our next monster isn't. Number 8. Impusa Like Lamia, Impusa was another female monster that preyed on humans while they slept. This shape-shifting creature would take on different forms depending on what she wanted to do. If she was trying to frighten travelers, one of her favorite activities, she would appear as a grotesque monster with legs made from bronze and cow dung. If she wanted to feed on the blood of young men, she would take on the shape of a beautiful woman. She would also sometimes take on the shape of a cow, a mule, or a dog. No matter what shape she took, she was not the type of being you wanted to cross paths with, at least if you wanted to keep all your blood inside your body. Some monsters attack while you sleep, others are so strong they can only be attacked while they sleep. Number 7. Colchian Dragon During Jason's quest for the Golden Fleece, he encountered the monster that was tasked with guarding it in the sacred grove of Ares, the Colchian Dragon. This massive beast was so powerful, it was thought to mean certain death for Jason when he faced it. But with the help of the sorceress Medea, he put it to sleep and managed to slay the dragon. Even in death it still posed a threat though. Its teeth were taken out of its mouth by the king and sown in a sacred field. There they caused a group of stone soldiers to spring up from the earth and attack Jason. Sure, he managed to defeat those too, but how many monsters can still hurt you even after they've been killed? Number 6. Scylla Oh, would you look at that, Odysseus is here again. The next two monsters on our list come as a set and were among the horrors faced in the hero's odyssey. First, there was Scylla, a beast with 12 feet and 6 heads on long serpentine necks. Each head had three rows of sharp teeth, which she used to snap up her prey from within her cave whenever they got too close. She devoured six of Odysseus's men as his ship passed by her, but she shared those treacherous waters with another monster. Number 5. Charybdis Charybdis dwelled on the shores across from Scylla, where she would drink up and spit out the waters three times a day, creating a vicious whirlpool. Together, they made it nearly impossible to make it through the waters alive. Odysseus managed to, after being shipwrecked, only by holding onto a tree for dear life for hours until Charybdis spat up a raft she had swallowed. But what do you find more frightening, water or snakes? Number 4. Echidna Echidna was another half-woman, half-snake, but she was far more than just that. Hesiod described her as a flesh-eating monster who was not like mortal men, nor was she like the undying gods but was something else entirely. She was ageless with a taste for raw human flesh and spent her time lurking in a cave and preying on humans that were unfortunate enough to wander into her domain. She and her lover bore some truly nightmarish children together including the Gorgons, the Chimera, and the Colchian Dragon. That's not even close to all of them either. According to Apollodorus, she hunted humans for many, many years until her reign of terror was cut short by Argus, who killed her while she slept. And who could have expected Argus to come back? Talk about a plot twist! Number 3. Cerberus The twelfth and final labor of Hercules, the most dangerous one of all, was to travel into the underworld and kidnap Cerberus, the beast that guarded the gates of the land of the dead. The many-headed dog was a horrible sight to behold, with a serpent for a tail and the heads of snakes all over its back. Some accounts said that he had more than three heads, going up as high as fifty. Hesiod described the hellish hound in Theogony like this a monster not to be overcome and that may not be described, 
Cerberus who eats raw flesh, the brazen-voiced hound of Hades, 50-headed, relentless, and strong. He also describes Cerberus' role as the ultimate guard dog. As people go in, he fawns on all, with actions of his tail and both ears. But he will not let them go back out, but lies in wait for them and eats them up when he catches any going back through the gates. Once he arrived in the underworld, Hercules met with Hades, the god of the underworld, and he agreed that Hercules could take the beast with him if he managed to overpower Cerberus with nothing but his own two hands and no other weapons. Hercules did indeed wrestle Cerberus into submission, though he sustained a bite from the serpent tail in the process. Unlike the Nemean lion, Cerberus was not killed in the fight, he was taken to Eurystheus alive, and was later returned safely to his home in the underworld. Unlike the other monsters that Hercules faced off against, Cerberus survived the encounter without so much as a scratch. Soon after, he resumed his post and presumably got some nice scratches behind the many pairs of ears from Persephone for being such a good boy. But let's now go from a bad boy to a really scary girl. Number 2. Medusa No list of monsters would be complete without the woman whose mere gaze can turn a man into solid stone. Medusa Crowned with hair made of writhing, hissing snakes, she struck terror into the hearts of all men throughout ancient Greece. In one of the most famous versions of her myth, Medusa was assaulted by Poseidon in the temple of Athena and then punished by the goddess for the violation. She was then transformed into a monster that we all know today. Eventually, she was defeated by the hero Perseus with the help of the gods, but her powers persisted even after death. Her severed head, according to one version of the legend, was placed in Athena's shield and used to paralyze opponents on the battlefield with fear. If there is one monster from Greek myth that everyone knows, it's Medusa. So why isn't she number one on the list? Who could have possibly edged out the iconic Gorgon from the number one spot? Well, it's number one, Typhon. How about the father of all the monsters? This is the entity that created the Gorgons. Cerberus, Scylla, the Nemean Lion, the Sphinx, and several other entries on this very list. Typhon, the son of Gaia and Tartarus, is the largest and most powerful monster in Greek mythology. The giant monster had wings, snake heads in place of its hands, and a lower body made from even more coiled snakes. His eyes were made of fire, and he spat fiery stones from his horrible mouth. Some descriptions of him state that he spat poison instead, which he also emitted from his hair. Apollodorus described him like this. Down to his thighs, he was human in form, but of such immense size that he rose higher than all the mountains and often even scraped the stars with his head. With arms outstretched, he could reach the west on one side and the east on the other, and from his arms there sprang a hundred dragon's heads. Below his thighs, he had massive coils of vipers, which, when they were fully extended, reached right up to his head and emitted violent hisses. He had wings all over his body, and filthy hair springing up from his head and cheeks floated around him in the wind, and fire flashed from his eyes. So, yeah, pretty intimidating. It takes two to tango, of course, and Typhon didn't father all those children by himself. He had a wife, Echidna, who was also featured on this list. But while Echidna was slain by Argus, Typhon was not killed. Well, he was in one version of the story, but most takes on the myth agree that he survived. He battled Zeus himself and lived to tell the tale. He was imprisoned in Tartarus, or beneath the land of the Arimoi. There, beneath the ground, his rage shook the earth and caused volcanoes to erupt, terrorizing humanity even from within his eternal prison. Without Typhon, humanity would have had far fewer monsters to fight, so that earns him the place as the big daddy of them all. Now check out Soldiers Encounter Mysterious Monsters in Vietnam War, or watch this instead.